Welcome to Electron Line. Now we're going to talk about photons in the light of carbon dioxide atmospheric energy absorption. It's a big topic in the news these days and all in the classrooms and about science. And to understand this a little bit better, I want to do a few presentations on the association with photons and carbon dioxide energy absorption. So a carbon dioxide molecule is what we call a linear molecule. It has one carbon in the middle and two oxygens on the end. So it's a linear molecule. And it has what we call three ways in which it can absorb energy by absorbing energy and causing vibrations to occur, natural vibrations, in three different ways. One of those vibrations is called the bending vibration, the other one is called the symmetric stretching vibration, and the other one is called the asymmetric stretching vibration. The bending vibration is when the molecule bends like this, the symmetric stretching vibration is when the molecules uh, vibrates like this and finally the asymmetric stretching is when the molecule vibrates like this each of those vibrations occurs at different frequencies and because of that it can only absorb photons of a very specific wavelength and a very specific frequency and so the three are one that has 641.49 wavelengths per centimeter the other one is 1373 wavelengths per centimeter and the third one is 2438.1 uh, wavelengths per centimeter which then translates in wavelengths of 15.589 micrometers, 7.283 micrometers, and 4.102 micrometers. So what does that mean? Well, the Earth will radiate energy away back into space, and the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is able to absorb only those specific frequencies, and of course, not those exact numbers. You have to realize that the amount of energy absorption is in a range around those frequencies. For example, the one that's most effective of keeping energy from escaping back to space is the bending vibration, which has the greatest effect in carbon dioxide absorbing energy from the Earth, and it occurs at wavelengths of 15.589 micrometers, but you have to realize that it pretty well absorbs energy somewhere between 15 micrometers micrometers and 16 micrometers in wavelength and so there's a range of course it's most effective at this particular frequency but it kind of tapers off about about a range of one micrometer in in range there now what about the symmetric stretching well it turns out it's not very effective in absorbing energy from photon absorption coming back from the earth and of course the energy coming back from the earth is infrared radiation ion radiation which of course has wavelengths of greater than 700 nanometers all the way up into the micrometer range which is what we have right here now the asymmetric stretching is also a very good way in absorbing energy but it does so at four micrometers and that kind of puts it at the edge of the amount of radiation coming back from the earth here's a picture that shows you the rough radiation band radiation curve of energy going back from the earth back into space and notice that where carbon dioxide absorbs energy is between 15 and 16 micrometers and around the 4.1 micrometer which is associated with these two particular uh, vibration techniques or vibration modes one is the bending mode and the other one is the asymmetric stretching mode remember the symmetric stretching doesn't really absorb that much energy notice that because carbon dioxide can absorb this band and this band there is virtually no radiation going back into space right here and right here in this window notice that the blue here is the radiation that's being held back by the water vapor in the atmosphere it turns out that water vapor is way better at absorbing energy from the earth and keeping it from going back into space than carbon dioxide water vapor is responsible for about 90 percent of the what we call greenhouse effect in the atmosphere and carbon dioxide is responsible for about 10 percent roughly speaking so it turns out if there were no water vapor in the atmosphere and there were no carbon dioxide in the atmosphere the earth's temperature on average would be about two degrees below zero uh, no that would be Fahrenheit degrees let me go back that would be about minus 19 degrees centigrade so with no greenhouse gases no greenhouse gases in the atmosphere and of course the two primary greenhouse gases is water vapor h2o vapor and carbon dioxide co2 gas without those two greenhouse gases the average temperature in the world the average temperature would be about minus 19 degrees centigrade that's about 33 degrees centigrade colder than it is today 
because the average temperature in the world today is around 15 degrees centigrade, so minus 19 to 15, that's about 34. So the, the number is about 33, which is what they typically use. Now, how much of that is due to water vapor and how much of that is due to carbon dioxide? It turns out about 30 degrees of that is due to water vapor and about three degrees of that is due to carbon dioxide. So the question then is, well, what happens when we put more carbon dioxide into the atmosphere? And the problem here is, that since carbon dioxide and water vapor, because notice that there's an overlap here between water vapor and carbon dioxide, since carbon dioxide and water vapor already absorbs pretty well 100% of this energy band, and over here, with water vapor and carbon dioxide, 100% of that energy band, increasing carbon dioxide in the atmosphere wouldn't really make a lot of difference in absorbing more energy from the Earth. This here is what we call the radiation window. If this radiation window were to be closed up, of course, the Earth would heat up tremendously and all life on the Earth would probably cease to exist. But it turns out this window here, this radiation window, which allows radiation to escape back into space from the Earth, cannot be absorbed by any other gases in the atmosphere. Notice there's a small amount in that window here that's absorbed by ozone and oxygen, and the rest is absorbed to the right and to the left, and this main band here gets back into space. And so the temperature in the world is pretty well regulated by these natural phenomena, by the ability and the inability of these gases in the atmosphere to absorb energy. So you see that the way this is done again, radiation coming in from the Earth, in this case it's bubbling back up from the Earth, hits these carbon dioxide molecules. When the energy is absorbed, it causes the bending the symmetric stretching and the asymmetric stretching which absorbs energy from the earth but only in those very narrow frequency bands which are illustrated right over here. So you can see that now what would happen if you were to double the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere? Well we know that the split between the absorption and temperature difference it's about 30 degrees warmer because of water vapor and about 3 degrees warmer because of the carbon dioxide. So this is caused by the water vapor and this is caused by the carbon dioxide. Now, what would happen if we were to increase the carbon dioxide? Well, doubling, let's say, the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere wouldn't do much to the amount of energy absorbed because the energy is already almost completely absorbed right here in this band. This band would get a little bit wider because what would happen here is, of course, by putting more carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, you would get a wider distribution of of the amount of absorption here, and so it would cause the temperature to go up just a little bit. Estimation probably is if you double the carbon dioxide that the amount of temperature de increase would be maybe another three tenths or four tenths of degree centigrade, and so it wouldn't really make that much of a difference in here. It's very interesting how the specific energy absorption by the carbon dioxide molecule is really set scientifically in how it can bend and how it can stretch and how it can vibrate. So it's really locked into only absorbing those specific frequencies and not the other ones. So as long as we keep this window open and there's nothing in the atmosphere that would close this at this point, we will still continue to, um, to radiate energy back into space and the temperature in the Earth should be fairly normal, fairly constant the way it is. There's other factors, of course, that, that affect the climate a lot more, but of course that's in the climate science and not into the scientific uh, physics science of the whole matter here. So hopefully that gives you a much better idea of how what happens in the atmosphere is really tied again to the fact that we have photons that are reaching back up from the Earth, back into space, and those that cannot make it out is what keeps the atmosphere warm, and those that get back into space is what keeps the, the climate controlled within the atmosphere and, within, and on the Earth. And again, it's simply the ability of the carbon dioxide molecule to absorb energies at those specific frequencies and not the other ones. And that's how that works.